Okay, there are two ways to do this. Uh, one is the factor label method, which is horrible and confusing. So I'm going to try and show you the method using boxes. All right then, six grams of hydrogen reacts with fluoride to reduce hydrogen fluoride. So the equation that we're going to use is moles equals mass over molar mass. Tattoo that on the inside of your eyelids. It's an important equation. You're going to be using it all the time. And since that's the equation we're going to be using, we'll, we'll put it at the top there so the IB perhaps will give us a point for it. If everything else is wrong, they'll still accept that. All right then, so hydrogen and fluorine are diatomic. And I'm going to make hydrogen fluoride, which is HF. Now that's unbalanced, so I'm just going to stick a 2 in front of the hydrogen fluoride. Now we're going to draw uh, some boxes underneath and make a nice little table. So moles is at the top and then mass, and we're going to use grams, and then molar mass, which is in grams per mole. So remember the relationship, moles is mass over molar mass. Let me just finish off my table. Now I've only got one number to put in, I've got nine boxes but one number. I've got six grams of hydrogen, and the question's asking me, what mass of hydrogen fluoride is produced. So where I'm putting the question marks is, is that I've had to get the contents of that box. That's the answer box, if you will. So the molar mass of hydrogen can be worked out. It's one and one equals two. I'm not going to worry about uh, lots of decimal places and things like that. And for fluorine, it's 19 and 19. So that's 38 grams per mole. So if I had 38 grams of fluorine, I'd have one mole. And for hydrogen fluoride, well, that's one and 19, and that's 20 grams per mole. So each line has a rule, and the rule for the bottom line is ignore the big numbers, which are the coefficients in the equation. So it says 2HF, ignore that big 2. Just look at the molar mass of H and add it to F. All right then, so moles is mass over molar mass, so 3 is really 6 divided by 2. Now the top line is the ratio line. So if you look at the numbers in the equation, 1, 1, and 2, that ratio has to be reflected in the moles, in the ratio line, so to speak. So 1 is to 3, as 1 is to 3, as 2 is to 6. Once we've done that, we can fill in the other two boxes. The key with all of this is try and get the mole line filled in, and then you're done. 6 times 20 is 120, because moles times molar mass is mass. And that's my answer. So 6 moles of hydrogen fluoride times 20 grams per mole, that's 120. Now there is one spare box which you can fill in to double check. And the middle, the middle line is mass, and there's conservation of mass. Mass can't be created or destroyed in chemistry. And so 6 grams of hydrogen and so, I don't know how many grams of fluorine, make 120 grams of hydrogen fluoride, so it must be 114. 6 and 114 is 120. And you can double check, looking vertically for fluorine, 3 times 38 is 114. Yeah, that's a double check. Let's try another one. Alrighty, so this is the harbour process, which you'll learn more about in the equilibrium section. Nitrogen and hydrogen are both diatomic. So N2 and H2, and ammonia is NH3. Now that's not balanced, so it's a 1, a 3, and a 2. So 1 mole of nitrogen reacts with 3 moles of hydrogen to make 2 moles of ammonia. Let's put the box in and the equation, moles is mass over molar mass. And don't forget, the top line is the ratio line. The middle line is conserved, and for the bottom line, ignore the big numbers. Those are the most common mistakes people make. Just getting those mixed up. And again, we have moles, mass, and molar mass. I've only got one number in the question, 0 0.1 moles of nitrogen, so let me put that in. Now, in the equation, I've got one mole of nitrogen reacting with three moles of hydrogen. But in reality, I've only got 0 0.1 moles of nitrogen. So then that, sensibly, is only going to react with 0 0.3 moles of hydrogen, producing 0 0.2 moles of ammonia. 1 is to 0.1, as 3 is to 0.3, as 2 is to 0.2. Now we're not quite finished because the question asks for the mass of ammonia. 
Well, the molar mass of ammonia is 14 and 1 and 1 and 1, which is 17. Remember, ignore the big numbers. Don't multiply that all by 2. And now moles times molar mass is mass, so 0 0.2 times 17 is 3.4. And that's my answer, 3.4 grams. Don't feel obliged to fill in the other boxes. Uh, if you have time, you could double check. That's one of the most common mistakes my students make. They always want to fill in every box. OK, so phosphorus and chlorine makes phosphorus pentachloride. And these are kind of weird numbers, 2, 5, and 2. So let's draw out the grid. Moles, mass, and molar mass. Put the units in, in case you forget later, and write out the equation that you need to use. And maybe it'll help to remember those three headings. Ratio, that's conserve the middle line, and ignore the big numbers. OK, so I'll put in the one number that's given in the, in the question there. And by using the ratio line at the top, the moles, I'm going to try and work out the other two numbers. So 2 is to 0.5 as 2 is to 0.5. Okay, so that's straightforward. It's the same number. Now, if we say that the moles of chlorine is x, you can do a simple ratio to work out x. 5 over x is 2 over 0.5, just by comparing the coefficients to the moles. And when you solve that, the moles of chlorine is 1.25. Now, notice that line doesn't have to add up. Mm -mm. That's the mass line where you have to ha has to be conserved. The mole line, that's just the ratio line. Alrighty, so that's the answer to the question, but let, let's carry on. Let's fill in the other boxes. 31 from the periodic table. 2 times 35.5 gives me 71. And there's the molar mass of phosphorus pentachloride. So by doing moles times molar mass, I get mass. By doing moles times molar mass, I get mass again. And the final box... I can get the answer two ways. I can add up the mass of the reactants to get the mass of the products because mass is conserved. And I can double check moles times molar mass is mass, so 0 0.5 times 208.5 is 104.25. Easy.